Well, welcome, welcome to another lesson of the Focus on Contentful course. I am Marcelo Lynn, the Headless Creator. As always, you can get a hold of me right there. There is my email address, marcelo at headlesscreator.com. Today, my guest presenter is Sevak Akizian. He is back for another great presentation. This is part three of a three-part series on using the Contentful CLI. Today, he's going to show us how to work with uh, content, how to uh, export content from an environment and re-import it into another environment. It's gonna be a great, great presentation. So without further ado, welcome, sir. Welcome back, actually. Hey. N nice to have you here again. Thank you for doing these. Uh, your presentations are always amazing, so thank you. Thank you. So um, I, we were talking about people uh, already know a lot about you because you, I think this is your fourth or fifth time. Uh, but one thing I never asked you was, um, I don't think I ever, ever did. And I know I, I told you I was going to ask you a question, but I, I changed it last minute. What's your favorite drink? Like if you and I would go to a bar, you, what would you order? Oh, that's a hard one, I guess. Well, depending on the mood, I'll drink either beer or... Okay. Jägermeister with Red Bull. Oh, oh, so you have that specific mix right there. Okay, I'm a yeah. beer guy myself too. Yeah, I like darker, bitter beers. Uh, I like more like uh, light, but not filtrated. I see, okay, very good. Is there, and now um, I think most people know because you've been here before, but for those that don't know, you are in Armenia. Yeah. Is there an Armenian uh, brewed beer that, that you recommend? Uh, yeah, there are actually several types of beers that are produced in Armenia. Uh, mm -hmm. But I don't know if you have them in the US. So one is called like, Kotaik, uh, the other is Gimri, and so we have Target called, I guess you might have Target, but the other ones, I don't think so. Which one is your favorite? Would you recommend if I can get one here? Uh, if you like the bitter ones, try Kotaik. Okay, we're going to review this in on demand. And that's why you need an account at headlesscreator.com because you can review this and then go get that beer. Okay, so all right. I know people didn't come for this here, but they can find out so much more about you because, you know, we talked about a variety of things. Uh, we're ready for your presentation. Um, so we're, we're seeing here your slides. Uh, for those of you watching live, as always, uh, you can put a question um, and I'll I ask Sebak during the presentation. Sebak, it's all yours. Thank you, Marcelo. Uh, okay, so let's start with recapping what, we, what have we learned during parts one and two. Uh, during part one, we have learned uh, how to install Contentful CLI and how to authenticate with it. Uh, also, we have learned how to create and delete spaces, how to see the list of spaces, and what does the command use do. Uh, and during part two, we have learned uh, how to create and delete environments, uh, how to see the list of environments and the command use. Uh, and also during part two, we have learned what are environment aliases and how we can create and update them and see them and in general, what do they do. Uh, so for today's lesson, lesson, we are going to learn how to, uh, how to do migrations uh, how to export content from one environment, how to import it to another environment, and in general, why do we need it? Uh, so uh, let's begin with why do we need it? Uh, let's imagine we have an environment that provides data to some application that shows it, uh, and we want to add some new content or new content types uh, and surely we want to test it before going live. Uh, so we have created a second environment called, let's say, test or development or something. And we have done all our changes. We have created new content, new content, new content models. We have tested it, everything. Uh, and now we want to go live with our new content. Uh, we can't just simply like switch our environments like we did last time because most probably if it's a big change uh, we have some new content in master that we don't have in our development uh, environment uh, so we need to migrate uh, what new 
entries we have created to our master. Uh, and now let's see how we can do that. Uh, as you can see, I have a main uh, space, I have master environment, and I have release 1.2. And I want to migrate data from master to release 1.2. Uh, I have two content models in master, article and blog. Uh, I have three articles in master, one draft and two published. Um, and I have nothing like in my release 1.2, it's completely empty. So uh, first we need to export our data. Uh, that, Real quick can... question for you. Sure. You showed the content models and the content. Will this also export the media or are we focusing mainly on content models and content? Uh, it also exports the media. So okay. assets will be exported too. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so as usual, uh, let's see what properties does export have. Control, export, uh, dash help, which uh, shows us all the available options. So we can provide space ID, environment ID, management token, uh, and uh, we can like customize it very much. Uh, we can include, by default, it does not uh, export drafts, but if we need drafts, we can export drafts, although also uh, we can skip content model and export only like content roles and some stuff. Uh, we can skip content, we can skip roles. Like most of this is like fairly self-explanatory and uh, it has some short description what it does. Uh, today we'll go through a couple of these. Uh, okay, so first let's just like, run simple export. Uh, Space. Uh, and just a heads up, this won't work now. Yeah. Uh, because I didn't provide space ID and also I didn't use the use command on space, if you remember from our first lesson. Uh, so this is what happens if you don't have a default space. If I run this, we'll see the list of our spaces. Uh, and we're going to use the main space. So if I do... As you're doing that real quick, uh, in that list, right, if it was blue, then you knew that you would know that that is the default space. But since nothing is blue, then there are no default spaces selected yet. Yep, exactly. Thank you. Cool. Uh, so the space ID is here, is this, and we provide the environment ID, uh, is master. And if we now export this, as you can see, it's doing some things. Uh, and it exported two content types that we had, and it exported two entries. Why two? Because one of our entries was draft, and by default, it does not export draft entries. Uh, to export draft entries, we can just provide uh, include drafts true. And it will now export also the drafts. Yeah, as you can see, it's now exported three entries. Um, yeah, uh, so typing these long commands in the command line is not very easy and uh, it's, um, we usually uh, we don't want to do that. Uh, that's why the contentful has another way of doing it. We can provide a JSON file as a config and it will read all these configs from a JSON file. Uh, I have already created the JSON file, so as you can see, we have an export config. Uh, just ignore these other files for now. Uh, we have export config JSON, uh, and if we go here, you can see we have space ID, environment ID, and some 
other properties that we will go through. Uh, and how we can help in Pencil to use our uh, file. So, uh, instead of all of these, um, we do config and we give the path to our file. So it's in the current directory and it's export config.json. Uh, and now it's exporting according to the rules that were in this file. Uh, so uh, let's now go through this file. It has a space ID and environment ID, which we already talked about. It has content file, which means that uh, our export will export file will be named export JSON. By default, it names them uh, contentful export something, something, some name. Uh, but if we use this, as you can see, our latest export is called expert JSON. So it took our command. Uh, it says include drafts, which we already saw. Uh, it says content only, which means that uh, you can see here that it uh, exported only entries, assets, and tags. So Comparing to here, there are no interfaces, no locales, no webhooks, nothing. So it's just plain uh, content. Uh, also, we have query entries. Uh, this is a very useful thing. So here you can put any filters you want. So if you don't put this, it exports everything. So if we just delete this, uh, it will export all three of our entries. Just quickly see that, yeah, it exported all three entries. Um, but if we put this back, so as you can see, we are exporting only entries that have, uh, only entries with these two IDs. Uh, and if we now export this, You'll see that uh, it exports only only two entries. Well, well, that you're doing that. Um, so does that mean in that filter, can we? It shows the system fields. If you go back to the code, it says sys that ID right, which is the ID of the entry in in meaning that in that list. But can we use um, any field in the content model? So if we want to say um, only entries of content type X, Y, Z that have the full name field filled out, let's say, can we do that or no? Yeah, yeah, we definitely okay. can do it. Uh, we can filter by virtually anything like by ID, content types, some fields, uh, creation date, updated date, owner, and so on and so forth. Cool. But basically, whatever filters you can see in Contentful, you mm -hmm. can filter by them, by them, and you can combine them, whatever, however you want. That's great, because um, I know sometimes people want to take some content from Contentful and maybe put it in a spreadsheet to man manipulate it or do something with mm -hmm. it. This would, this would be another good way of doing that. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Uh, and about this, uh, this in means we are giving a comma separated list of values. So uh, if we just want to give one value, obviously we just like this. Uh, there is also, uh, you can type like not in and uh, again, give the comma separated list of values. So. Uh, you can have greater than, less than, and so on and so forth. So uh, there are very, it's very flexible, uh, the query entries. And also there is uh, the similar command query assets, which, which works the same with assets. So it filters assets that will be exported. Uh, okay, let's quickly see if we have Missed anything with export. Uh, okay, we have talked about drafts, talked about this. Uh, I'm not, um, okay, I uh, let me just quickly show the skip.